you're down to just your knife and you don't have any cordage with you, a couple of points to make is that, you know, my, my boots, for example, I always replace my, my laces with uh, 550 paracord so that I have some, you know, cordage if I was down to just this situation. Um, however, I also don't want to wear through and break that boot lace, so that's kind of a last resort for me. I could also, you know, I don't want to sacrifice any sort of clothing, but I could also take this lower edge of my shirt before that seam right there, and it would keep it from unraveling the rest of the way, but I could use that, you know, for some cordage in an emergency, and I certainly would do that if, if that's the only option I had. Um, I can also use something as simple as a root, uh, like a spruce root especially, which I, I don't have any around here to show you. But there are some vines that work really well. You just got to test them, see if you can put a knot in them without them breaking, see how pliable they are. Uh, that's another option you could do. You could try to use, you know, a lot of inner barks. Um, if, it's, if the inner bark is green, especially, like this stuff is old and dry, um, it's not going to make that great. Uh, a cordage for a bow drill for the amount of friction I'm going to put on, but that's pretty strong. Uh, so that when this is new, uh, newly green I should say, this could be you know a good option. Yucca is another great example uh, that you could use. Yucca is a fibrous plant, so really any natural plant fiber that's good and strong. Things I think I'm going to use today is, uh, this is a what used to be a, a dog bane plant, and I don't have any dog bane around here to show you a great example of it. Um, that's uh, that's actually, you know, still green and, and, and blooming. So, but this is a dry one that's already kind of been broken up a little bit. But this makes fantastic cordage. Uh, it's some of the strongest fiber uh, that I know of, other than yucca, uh, which is pretty strong. Um, but basically, it's got this pithy stalk in it, and you can get rid of that as you're going, and you're left with this nice fiber on the outside. Pull that apart. So you can see how nice and fibrous that is. And I'll show you kind of up close here. This might be out of focus actually. So we're just taking the pithy stuff off, just this stuff right here. You can get rid of that. Because you're trying to just get down to the fibrous outer bark that's on there. I'll keep working that. The other key thing to remember when you're using a natural cordage is it's not as durable as a synthetic cordage would be, like a paracord or a bank line or your boot lace or uh, you know the the bottom of your t-shirt, what have you, whatever you're using. It's not quite as durable. It's not going to stand up to friction as well. So every time uh, I'm doing this. I'm taking the time to make one piece of cordage long enough for my bow. I'm going to go ahead and take the time to make two or three pieces if I've got it because when I'm down to the point where I have to make the fire, I may not have a lot of time to mess around. Um, so if that cordage breaks, I can switch it out real quick and continue what I'm doing and not have to stop and basically start over. So make sure you always source enough to do two or three uh, cords. And if you've got time, go ahead and get enough ready that you can have two to three cords. All right, so I'm getting down to it here. You can see what I'm left with is just really good, strong cordage. So I've got me a couple pieces of this dog bane right here. I'm going to start with this one I think is probably good enough actually. I'm going to make sure they're both long enough to go on that bow. Yeah, they are. I'm going to start with this piece I think. But you can see that that cordage is awesome. So what I'm going to do is just get that in my bow here. 
but I'm not going to reverse wrap this like I would if I was trying to make, uh, which is another version of cordage I'll show you on a different video, but I'm not trying to do a reverse wrap for this because that reverse wrap, you know, basically doubles the amount of cordage that I need. And I'm trying to keep one piece so they don't have any splices because splices generally can be a weak point, uh, especially when you're putting this much friction and movement on it uh, in, in a bow drill. So I don't want any splices if I can, if I can help it. I'm just going to put a little overhand stopper knot in the end there. And with my bow, I've got a shorter bow. It's a little less efficient than I would. Well, it's not too much shorter than I would normally go, but it's a little less efficient to use a shorter bow. I'm just going to split the top right there. And notice how I keep my finger right there whenever I'm making a split, because once I reach that, finger my knife is not going to go any further past that if you try to do it like this with your hand down here you're taking a chance of skimming off and cutting your other hand statistically for right-handed people most cuts that they sustain are to their left hand that they're not using because they they you know were kind of in the in the direction of fire there but if you put your finger on top of the knife right there you can't go any further than that so I split both ends of that to give myself a slot for that cordage to go into. I'll take my knotted side and just kind of drop it down in that slot. And then I'll kind of twist this entire thing. I don't really want to put you know, too much tension on it because this isn't going to stretch like a synthetic cordage would. It'll just break, and I don't want it to break. But I do want it to kind of stay together. I'm going to twist that up a little bit. And because it doesn't stretch, I'm going to leave myself enough room in here to be able to get this spindle inside there. Then I'm going to drop it in the other side here. Now from there, you see how loose that is. I've got to put my spindle in and make sure that it's tight enough. And with this, I can set my bow down on the ground, give it a little flex, get my drill inside there, and then it's in there. So I know that's a little bit too loose, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this back, put a knot in it. to keep it from pulling through. I'm going to say that's probably pretty good. Test that out. That's not bad at all. Okay, so now I've got this loaded up and I'm ready to go. Everything from this point is the same with the exception of the technique that you're going to bow with. Whenever I'm using regular cordage, you see this offset that I have right here? When I put that bow parallel, you have the cordage touching itself after it goes around. And you keep that bow parallel, and you can see how much they rub against each other. A synthetic cordage can take that, but when you're using natural cordage, you're still going to keep the bow you're not going to keep the bow parallel to the ground. You're going to increase the angle so that you can create some separation between these two strands. And while I'm still going forward and backward, maintaining the same angle of the bow, it's not parallel anymore. And I'm, a lot of times I'm taking shorter strokes too. Because what I'm trying to do is transfer, translate that forward motion into circular motion without causing friction here. So that angle of the bow is what keeps those strings apart while I'm bowing. And that allows my natural cordage to last a lot longer than it would if I held it parallel and allowed it to rub on each other.
and dress up this spindle a little because I'm getting a lot of friction. Everything is the same with the exception of the cordage and the bowing technique. So I've still got to take care of all these little things that happen along the way. I'll make this a little wider. I'll reduce some of that top friction. And I'll get back to it before I lose too much heat. You can probably see that against my shirt. A lot of it I dropped down here, but that's okay. Zoom that camera up so you can see it. Place that up in my tinder bundle. Get some of that extra dust in there.
and there you have it. That is the same thing, friction fire, with natural cordage if you only have a knife.